Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and we are here once again with our old Central Pneumatic Harbor Freight 21 gallon air compressor. And what we're going to be doing today is doing a couple of upgrades to it and talking about some of the upgrades I have already done to it. And most of the things we're going to talk about today in this video apply to pretty much any air compressor, especially this one right here. This is a remote tank drain that I installed. So just a ball valve on a hose and stuff so you don't have to get on the floor to drain the water out of the tank of this thing. This is muy bueno for any compressor out there. And then we're going to talk about a couple of things that are more unique to these like crappy Chinese air compressors. It doesn't matter if you bought yours from a box store or Harbor Freight or whatever. All of these things that I've run across, no matter where they came from, if they're in this price segment, these are problems with them. But before we get into all that, if you're just joining us now, I did a review and a repair on this guy in probably last week's video. I'll throw a link to that for you right up there and down in the description. And also, all the parts I go over on this thing will also be linked down in the description for our upgrades. So the first upgrade we're going to talk about is getting rid of the garbage air regulator all these things come with. Normally, there'd be another gauge over here with a you know a knob on the top of it and everything. So all these things come with a regulator, but the problem with that regulator is it has no flow rate whatsoever. For years and years, I had a buddy that told me this little junky compressor would never run an impact gun and blah, 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 because it's just too small. I kept trying to explain to him, it doesn't matter what the compressor itself is because you have the volume of stored air. So I can run an impact gun, but just not for very long. Well, sure enough, I got my impact gun, plugged it in, and as soon as you hit the trigger, you could just watch the gauge pressure on the regulator just drop to zero. Well, I still had plenty of tank pressure. So the issue wasn't, as my buddy was telling me, that this compressor is a piece of junk, although it probably is. The issue was I just couldn't flow the volume of air through the regulator that this thing came with. I've run into that on three other compressors like this. So first thing right off the hop, if you buy one of these cheap compressors, yank that regulator on off and throw her in the trash. If you're doing something you feel you need regulated air for, spend the money and buy a good regulator. Personally, I have not yet got to that point. We're flirting with the idea though. So once you rip the junk matic regulator off of this thing, you got an empty hole here to do something with. And what I like to do is put a brass T in so I can have an air fitting here and an air fitting here. Because my shop air actually runs off to a hose reel and that's what I have plugged into this guy. So that leaves this guy over yonder open up to just plug a hose into if I want to do something else and don't want to use the hose reel. So I always like to throw a T in to give myself a couple options. And this is something I touched on in my how to seal air fittings video. I like to use high quality fittings these days. These are all Milton fittings that you'll find in my shop peppered about. I believe these are all made in the US, but the nice thing is they're nice heavy duty brass fittings and they don't leak. They're not impossible to assemble after they get broke in. And I'm expecting to have basically a lifetime of service out of these things instead of every couple years having to change out all the junk harbor freight ones. And yes, I know you can disassemble these and rebuild them and stuff, but I just don't feel like screwing with that. So first three upgrades in my opinion, get rid of the junk air regulator, throw you a T in and upgrade some fittings to some decent stuff. If you really don't need the two fittings, that's up to you. You don't need the T, but it also just is kind of nice to get a little more length away from your ball valve here. Hmm. Yeah, I just said the fittings don't leak and now we got one that is a little touchy. Because of course it is, because that's YouTube. Truth be told, I just had a hose in that thing for the first time in a long time. And there's probably just some crap in here blocking up the seals. And she's still going to be a problem child. Anyway, what I was saying is it gives you a little more reach to be able to operate your ball valve, which as you can clearly see, you need to operate. Singing the praises of this fitting, it's going to start leaking on us. <laughs> just always got to be something. So despite everything I just said, I think I am going to make myself a liar and try and take this thing apart and fix it. Because I think this is my fault. I've never really used this accessory one much. It's just nice to have it around. And I think I had it angled kind of downhill. So it probably got a bunch of crap blown into it from the compressor. So is what it is. I've never tried to take one of these things apart before, but I'm pretty sure we just can get on that knurling in the back and just unthread it from the body. Or we might just unthread it from the whole T. Or neither of those things. Good grief. Or just round off all the brass trying. Let's see if I can get a better angle on it for me. Good God. I'm just cleaning the brass off. Uh, I think to take it apart from the other end, we release this wire snap ring and then the collar and all the balls and everything come off. So maybe we'll try that because this bottom guy is not wanting to turn for us. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun to get this thing out of there. There we go. There it is. Let's see if everything falls apart in my hand. It looks like the spring's still retaining those balls. 
Okay, so collar, spring, retaining clip, and two of the balls. There's one still in it right here. Get a magnet and see if we can fish it out of there. Got to take a look at this thing, see if I can get the plunger out of the middle of it or what. I think I can get in there with a smaller magnet on a stick. I was grabbing something. It doesn't want to seem to come out. I'll try and give you guys a better look at what's going on. I expected to see like a face seal or something down there because that's what the other end of an air fitting would go into. That guy doesn't seem to want to come out and it looks like there's a rubber disc behind it probably. And you can see it's kind of maybe rusty colored and I bet there's a bunch of crap on that that we need to get out of there so this will stop leaking. And if it wasn't obvious before, what I was trying to do was unthread this guy from this guy because I think they are supposed to. But she was not real willing to do it. I think I'm going to try a pair of vice grips and see if we can get it apart that way. Got my vice grips. I've got them cranked down to crush it so it isn't round anymore. It's unthreading the whole fitting. It's kind of what I figured would happen. And now the vice grips are just turning now that I'm holding it with a wrench. Even more. Crush it so it's not round anymore mode. Oh, it's pretty tight. There it goes. Let's find out what's in here. I've never taken one of these apart before. Oh yeah, this was 100% my fault. You guys see all the junk built up on that plunger? That's why it's not sealing air. All that rust and crap that built up up here. So not the fittings fault, totally my fault for not servicing my compressor and probably not installing this correctly. Having it pointed level or down was a big mistake, I'm sure. So I'm gonna spend some time cleaning that up and I'll throw it back together and hopefully she won't leak when we're done. So I took all this stuff with a brass brush about as well as I could. And you can see just from having moisture sitting there that this piston is actually all corroded up. That's all pitted and stuff. Uh, these fittings are only actually about two years old. So maybe I'm not doing the right thing by preaching the gospel of Milton. I don't know. Maybe I should try some Parker fittings or somebody else's. But for right now, Milton is what I've been running. I also cleaned up the O-ring that it was sitting against as well as I could. We'll see what happens. If it turns out this fails, I may try a different brand. But the bigger point of this whole upgrade sermon is that the fittings that the Chinese compressors come with are 100% crap. Whether or not you buy Milton's or you buy something else, upgrading the fittings is a good thing. So I'm going to get this guy put back together, and when we get it fired up, we'll see if it still leaks. If it does, I may try something else. Reassembled. I think what I may do if this ends up continuing to give me problems in the future, given how hard I run this little compressor and how much moisture I do make with it, because it's always like 100% humidity here in the summer, I may actually take my valving setup here and put it on like a six foot whip and put it way up so that the water tends to drain back out of the tank and not hang out in these things. For the size of those little plungers, I'm kind of disappointed they're not brass or stainless, so maybe we'll also look into doing something other than this. We'll just have to see how it goes with time. Jumping into the future, we've got pressure on it again. Got our valve open, no more leaky poo. So I'll go ahead and accept the old L on that one for being my fault for having that mounted so it was just kind of a dirt leg. But I may still research options in the future to see if we can find something with like a stainless plunger in it or something, because that'd be cool. So now we're onto this guy, our remote drain setup. I did a no mess air compressor draining video a while back, so it is a video from a while back. So if you think this one's bad, wait till you see that. But the basic root of this is I have a hose that I use for my outlet into a vessel. I have a ball valve and I have another hose that runs down to the bottom of the tank. And that runs into another ball valve that I straight up forgot was even here because this system grew incrementally over time. I started with just this 90 degree, what is called bar stock fitting. So it's a really tight 90 degree angle. So it actually doesn't hit the floor. So it can still set on its little rubber standoffs. And you can also see this thing has been a leaker for us for a while, which I've kind of known ever since I did this. The compressor would lose a few pounds of air pressure every day, and it really never did before. So I need to tear that off and fix it. I'll get that cleaned up, and I'll show you guys a better look at these parts. And I may uh, get my ball valve back. We'll see. So I've got her torn off there and cleaned up, and here's a better look at our setup. They call these bar stock 90s because they're machined from a solid billet of brass, so these are kind of expensive. I think they're like 10 or 15 bucks, but they're completely worth it to get away from getting under your compressor and messing with one of those little crappy drain cocks. I did remember why I put this ball valve in there, and that is because this hose has live air pressure the whole time the compressor's charged, and I was worried that if I ever pinch this or cut it, I would just completely take my compressor offline right in the middle of when I was trying to get some work done, whereas I can just reach under there and just shut her off instead. So that's why I put a ball valve at each end. Dealer's choice whether or not you want to do that. Pretty much every compressor I've ever encountered is 8th inch NPT thread at the tank. So this guy needs to be 8th inch NPT male. And that guy down yonder is 8th NPT female. If this is something you're interested in doing, you want to verify that yourself, of course, before you start ordering expensive parts. You just go to your local hardware store and for a couple bucks you can get some pipe plugs in 8th and quarter and common sizes or whatever standard happens to be in the part of the world you're in. 
and try those if you don't have any pipe taps or anything like that to determine the thread. So that is the setup I like to run on my compressor drains. This guy needs taken apart and all resealed and everything because I'm pretty sure she was a leaker. So I got my guy here all regooped, cleaned up, all that good stuff. And I'm pretty sure that I have my valve such that it won't hit the floor or won't hit the tank in either position. But before I goop it up and run it back in there, I'm just going to thread it in dry and we'll double check. Because it would really suck to have this not work for us. And that's on. And she's maybe pretty close to hitting the floor. I think I'm going to try and give her just a touch more. And hopefully I don't break anything because it's already pretty tight. I'm also using a wrench. It's about a foot long. So there, it's almost touching the tank. So now it should clear the floor for sure. Yep, looks good. So we'll pull it back out of there, get some sealing on it, and then put it in for keeps. And there she is all gooped up and put on about as tight as I could dare to get it. And I believe there you'll be able to see it all misses the floor nicely. You can see a whole lot of nice air under that hose even. So, so that wraps up the drain upgrade. Let's move on to our last one. And that is going to be an air filter upgrade, or in my case, upgrading it to even have an air filter since I'm a dum-dum and took the element out of this thing ages ago and just threw it away. So I've been running this with no air filter. So if we're going to put an air filter on it, let's put a bigger one on it. And we're going to do that just because it'll help it flow more air more easily and everything else. Just the bigger filter you have, the better it's going to flow and the quicker it should pump up and all that. For me, anything I do is going to be a decrease in performance because it's been running wide open. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take parts of this guy and combine him with parts of this guy, which is just like probably a 5 to 8 horsepower Briggs & Stratton air filter housing. This is not my idea. I am not the inventor of this. I saw some other guy's YouTube video probably 10 years ago where he had done this. But at the time, it was, you know, way before people had links in the description, stuff like that. And I was just at the hardware store one day and saw one of these and bought it and thought, hey, I'll get to that and do it eventually. And 10 years passed. So eventually is today. And if I can find that guy's video, I'll also link it below. But it's been so long ago, I'm not sure that I can. Also, I'm pretty confident I'm not going to end up doing it the exact same way that guy did. Because what I would like to do is retain the factory wing nut and stud and all that stuff and this thread and all that from this piece. But you can't just stick them together because that stud's too short. So what I'm hoping to be able to do is cut the center out of this such that it basically fits inside here or pretty close and glue them together and, and then have a pretty low profile setup made from the two of those. So let's get into fabbing it up. And to do that, I'm going to take this one and a quarter inch hole saw, shove her on down in there like so, and see if I can just carefully hang on to it and run the middle right out of her. Because as opposed to how you would normally use a hole saw to make a hole in something you want to keep, I actually want to keep what's inside it. This one and a quarter inch is actually a little slack on there. So I'm probably going to put a few rounds of tape on it just to try and keep it a little tighter to that hole and try and just keep my work a little neat. If you are overall unfamiliar with the concept of a hole saw, this is how they normally look. There's a pilot bit in the middle and then, you know, an arbor you put into your drill. And that pilot bit is what keeps this thing from running all over the place. But in our case, we've got a stud in there, so we don't want that. So I've got another arbor here that I just backed an Allen screw off of and removed the drill bit from. And now no drill bit in the middle. Let's get some tape on that guy until it fits this guy pretty nicely and we'll give it a shot. And I've got it fitting in there pretty good. Really, once this thing starts, it'll kind of want to stay centered on its own. And I've also used like a fabric electrical tape here just so it won't hopefully grab too much. So let's get the drill checked on it and see what happens. I already know the hard part is going to be just hanging on to this thing while I'm doing this. And also, the teeth on these things are usually set up for wood or steel, not plastic. So they're really aggressive for what I'm trying to do here. So one thing I'm going to do is start it the hole in reverse and hopefully just kind of get a decent start on it before we put the beans to it and try and go all the way. And of course, not cutting through my fingers would be good too. So we're just going to start it up in reverse, except it wants to unthread doing that. It wants to unthread from this arbor. I may end up using my other arbor that I just showed you a minute ago because it actually locks the saws. We'll see how bad it wants to just grab and bind. Uh, not too bad, really. Okay, this is going all right. Oh, geez, that was fast. <laughs> I was hoping to get a little cleaner specimen than that. We might be able to clean it up. Nope, I'm just going to hurt myself if I try that. So let's just take that with a file or something. Actually, to clean it up, I've just got it chucked up in the old hand lathe here, and we'll just take a file to it like so. Reverse our direction. Coming along pretty nice. Maybe just a little more. Yeah, anything that's left, if I want to trim it off, I'll just do it with the razor blade. You can see my hole saw actually wasn't too well centered. I've got basically no lip on this side and a big lip on this side. So I tried, but it'll still work. So the next moment of truth is to see if this was all for naught. Screwed up already. I was hoping to have a little more flange there. So we'll have to work with that. 
But let's see what our stud length looks like now. Oh, I just barely have enough flange to get there. And I don't know if I'll get a wing nut started on that or not. I may actually have to kind of come in flush. I think it'll be close if I can get it just perfect. So let's get it on there and see if I can. Well, it looks like yes. If I glue it up just exactly perfect, it's got plenty of thread engagement and it will just barely work. Like you can see our two halves, our inner piece is kind of nested in there. I'm going to take this shroud off to just make it easier to get in there and glue it and keep everything lined up. So I've got her tuned up for depth pretty well and I've got my thread bottomed out in the cylinder head so I know how it's going to need to be oriented. So what I want to do is hold it just about like so and I've got some CA glue and activator that I'm just going to put a nice heavy bead on and hit it with the activator and hold it that way for about 30 to 60 seconds. And then we should be able to take it off so we can actually glue it. If you've never seen this stuff before, I actually have recorded, edited, and uploaded an entire video about it. I just haven't released it yet because it's kind of in a series of other things and those other things aren't done yet, but we'll get to it. Okay, moment of truth. And I'm not actually counting on this for any strength or anything. I just need it so nothing runs away. So I do need this orientation. And I understand all you guys can see is the back of my hand. I apologize, just is what it is. Hopefully that is taking a set. It's not a very good set. Try and dribble a little more in there. Since there's already activator on here, it should pretty much like immediately cure. Give it another spritz or two just to be sure. Okay, it's on there, but it's not on there real strong. So now I have to real carefully get in here with something and just grab the collar that threads in the head and see if I can get that whole housing to unscrew so we can glue that up the right way. I'm gonna try my super long reach needle noses here. Yep. Real delicately take it the rest of the way off. Set it up for actual gluing. You can see I actually didn't get it too square. It's kind of meh off on an angle. I can probably kajigger with it a little bit, but this is basically set and it, it'll probably fit fine. But that's what we ended up with. Just a big blob of CA glue that's just holding this so we can put real glue around it and get it to be structural. I think that's a little better shot of what's going on. You can see that there's just a little bit of glue there that's holding that guy in. And he's actually pretty happy to wobble around if we're not careful. So I just need to put some tape on that to hold the glue in and we'll drop some glue in. So I've got her all taped up pretty good. And the idea of the tape there is that it's just a dam to hold the glue from the inside. We're just going to take a whole boatload of JB Weld and start laying it down in that crevice. And it'll sag on down in there and just fill that whole cavity and make that nice and strong. I've also discovered that stud actually does need to be on an angle. I think you'll be able to see that on camera or else the cover won't go on it correctly. So what we have here is pretty much what we want. Let's get it set up and glued before anything changes. So it is once again arts and crafts time in the shop, which means I've got a hot batch of JB Weld mixed up over here with a popsicle stick. Now becomes the fun of trying to get her on in there without screwing up like everything, including blocking the air passage if I can at all help it. Because that wouldn't help anything at all. I really don't want to have to clean it out later with something like a Dremel. Although we can. And the only air passage is down in the snout uh, where the threaded portion is. So everything else, good to have airflow there, but it's not critical. So all this stuff you see me no doubt smearing along the walls and everything. We'll try and clear that off, but it's not going to kill anything if we don't get it all. And I'm intentionally not using the fast curing JB Weld here because I want all the strength I can get. Because this thing's going to vibrate like nuts because it's an air compressor. So now I'm just going to kind of use it as a spatula and just kind of push the excess down, hopefully into the void in there between the part and the tape. Just get it to take shape. I think that's enough glue. I break popsicle sticks in half just to make them easier to deal with. So now I'm just going to take a clean one and just kind of try and work it around. Maybe try and get some of the excess out down in the cavities there, those portals. That's exactly where we don't want glue. Now that I'm knee deep into this and working off of bad memory from 10 years ago of somebody else's thing, I think what I would probably do here is just take my factory air cleaner down to the store and find something that had those threads on it and just screwed on. So I don't remember what that other guy did, but what I'm doing here is kind of silly for the result we're going to get. It's also kind of fun, so whatever. I've got everything out of the portal as much as I can there. Now it's just a matter of how much is it going to you know, creep as it sets and everything else. Being the slow stuff, maybe quite a bit, but I think we're going to be in good shape. And if we're not, there are files and Dremel tools. We'll make it work. To conclude our final bit of maintenance here, it's always a good idea to remember to put oil back in them. 
pretty much every air compressor I've ever seen calls for straight SA30 non-detergent oil. Don't put just regular motor oil in here. This stuff can be kind of hard to find. I think I ordered this from Amazon. It was shockingly expensive. You can get it at places like Tractor Supply, Rural King, whatever. You won't always find it at Walmart, AutoZone, places like that. So FYI. And what I would like to do this time is not radically overfill it like I did last time, which means we want the oil level to be halfway up that little red dot. I have no clue how much oil this thing takes. That right there is about half a quart and we're still not even in the sight glass yet. And you do want to be mindful as you fill these because empty and full look exactly the same. So you don't want to accidentally overfill it because you'll just keep putting oil in and never know the difference. That was about three quarters of a quart and still not on the sight glass. I think she's starting to come up. Yep. So it looks like this is probably pretty much a one quart system, which is probably why I overfilled it before. I probably just threw a whole quart in and it's not quite a quart is my guess. And that's pretty much perfect and there is like three ounces left out of a quart. So I promise you that's why I overfilled it last time is I just dumped the whole quart in. So I let it sit overnight and cure out. I took my tape off the back and that is what we ended up with on the bottom side. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it'll get the job done. And you can see all that JB Weld just kind of sagged and creeped on down into our slot. And She's good and solid. She's not going to go anywhere. So now the next trick is to see if it actually all fits and works the way we want. Get our housing, get our foam element installed, pushes in there, no big deal. Get our top cover guy, stud lines up, plenty of stud penetration there to get our wing nut and stuff started. Washer, wing nut, that's pretty snug. Let's see if it'll screw on and clear the compressor itself. And I know just from test fits when I was mocking this all up to glue it that this is going to be really tight but tight is okay and if i need to i can always trim the shroud back later pretty tight on the thread right there there we go and i dare say if i did not tell you that this did not come this way you wouldn't know give you the panoramic here she looks pretty factory installed to me so i'm pretty happy with that the only thing i could see becoming a potential issue is that all the air intakes are on this side of the filter and that's the cylinder head side so all this air is going to be pretty hot and also the shroud kind of partially obstructs all these things but the harbor freight filter this came with the opening on it wasn't even as large as this one hole here it just had that little tiny slot at kind of at the end of the nautilus shell thing so i think we'll be okay and like i said i can always trim the shroud back later if i think it needs it in my case i'm fully expecting this thing to be a performance detriment because i was running with no filter at all but for anybody else out there with one of these cheap Chinese compressors this is quite a bit more airflow capability than they come with out of the box so for today that's going to conclude our air compressor upgrades we've got rid of our crap regulator which I had done before and we've got some decent fittings on there you can make your own mind up whether or not you think my fittings are decent or not we've got our remote drain and it's all replumbed and sad to say it's leaking more now than it was before but eh whatever I tried. And we've got our larger air filter, so hopefully we can get another few good years of use out of this girl and then probably ship her on down the line. All the chunks of stuff I found in that thing are no doubt pieces of rust from inside the tank. So that tank is probably approaching no longer a wise idea to use. So next time something goes wrong on this thing, we're probably just going to send her to the next life. So that's the end of this one, guys. And as always, I appreciate you stopping in. We'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.